back now to demonstration I'm going to do, I'm calling wavelength frequency and energy of waves. I'm going to be illustrating to you the relationship between wavelength and frequency of a wave and also the, the relationship between frequency and energy. And this also holds true about uh, waves in strings, waves in springs, and also waves in oceans, and also electromagnetic waves. Sound waves, electromagnetic waves, all waves um, follow these same properties. The, we know that uh, velocity of a wave is equal to the wavelength of the wave times the frequency of the wave, right? And for electromagnetic waves, we have the velocity is the speed of light is equal to the wavelength of the electromagnetic wave times the frequency of the uh, electromagnetic wave. So we say that wavelength times frequency is inversely proportional to each other, right? The wavelength is the distance between a certain point on the wave and then when that wave, when that point begins to repeat. So this is called the wavelength of a wave. And it has the symbol lambda, the Greek letter lambda, to denote the wavelength, right? So what this is saying is when the wavelength is large, since the product of wavelength and frequency is velocity, when the wavelength is large, the frequency is low. That means the wave does not oscillate up and down very quickly. The frequency, the wavelength is measured in meters. The frequency is measured in cycles per second, which is also hertz. Same thing with uh, electromagnetic waves. This is the wavelength of the electromagnetic wave is measured in meters. The wavelength, uh, the, the frequency is measured in cycles per second or hertz, right? So when the wavelength is large, the frequency is low. So if we have two waves, this one has a larger wavelength. If you have another wave with a shorter wavelength, right? This one has a shorter wavelength. What's going to happen? This wave is going to go up and down quicker, right? This wave is going to go up and down slower. Now, what is the second equation saying? The energy that a wave carries depends on its frequency. If the frequency is high, the energy is high. Same thing for electromagnetic wave, right? So if you have the, uh, between these two waves, which one is gonna have the higher frequency, right? This, gonna, uh, this one has a larger wavelength, it has a lower frequency. This one has a smaller wavelength, it has a higher frequency. So how about the energy of the wave? This one is gonna have a smaller energy and then this one is going to have a higher energy, right? So a wave with a small wavelength carries a lot more energy. So when we apply this to the electromagnetic spectrum, we've got the radio spectrum, then we've got uh, infrared, then we've got visible light, then we've got uh, ultraviolet, x-ray, and gamma ray. Gamma ray. So this is the whole uh, electromagnetic spectrum. The radio wave region of the electromagnetic spectrum is the large wavelength, the largest. The AM waves are the largest within the uh, radio spectrum. The AM waves are the largest. So this is the largest, largest wavelength. So I'll just put a bunch of arrows, meaning it's very, very large. So if the wavelength of AM is very, very large, the frequency is very, very low. And that means the energy is very, very low, right? So as we go this way uh, to FM waves, and then in this region, there is a microwave region. Uh, between the radio and infrared is microwaves, right? So microwaves have a wavelength smaller than radio, but it's not as small as infrared. So we can put microwave is, let's say, put two of these arrows, you know, maybe three of the arrows. And then the frequency is low, but it's not as low as radio waves, and the energy is low, right? When we get to infrared, the wavelength, let's put two of them, right? Uh, is is uh, bigger, is, is big, but it's not as big as a uh, microwave, right? And the frequency is higher, okay? And the energy is higher. So we can see the frequency is high, but it's not going to be as high as visible. So when we keep going in this direction, by the time we get to gamma ray, the wavelength of gamma ray is very, very low, right? The frequency is very, very high, and the energy is very, very high, okay? So the gamma rays are the most dangerous waves, the very high frequency, very high energy, right? Within the visible spectrum, you've got Roy G. Biv, 
right? Red is the larger wavelength, the larger wavelength, and frequency is lower. Violet is a smaller wavelength, and frequency is higher. So blue, indigo, and violet are the high frequency end of the visible spectrum. Low wave, small wavelength, and high frequency, and therefore high energy. How does I, our, our eye know that we're seeing something that's blue? Well, it comes and impacts our eye with an energy that's more energetic than red, right? Red and orange is the larger wavelength region of the visible spectrum that has less energy. And so it comes and impacts the back of our eye with less energy, and therefore our brain interprets that as red or orange. And then yellow and green is in the middle, right? Uh, when you go beyond violet, you get uh, ultraviolet, smaller wavelength than violet, higher frequency than violet, more energetic than violet. So beginning with ultraviolet, these are the dangerous waves, right? If you sit in the sun too long, you get exposed to too much ultraviolet radiation. It changes the pigment of your skin. It causes you to tan, but it could also be dangerous in that it can cause cancer. Too much exposure to ultraviolet can change the, alter the genetic makeup of the cells of your skin, and it can mutate those cells to where they uh, become cancerous. That's why it's not good to be exposed to ultraviolet. It's not good to be exposed to too much x-rays also. You go to the x-ray and uh, what do they put? They put some kind of lead on you to prevent you from getting exposed to all that uh, x-ray, right? Being exposed to too much x-ray, however, is not a good idea. So all of these waves are the dangerous waves. So now let's uh, show you this demo using the spring. This is spring, okay? This rod. So I'm gonna be creating a, um, a wave here of a large wavelength, you see, very gentle. So how do I create a wave? I create a wave by bobbing my hand up and down at a certain frequency. So if my frequency is low, I don't go up and down very quickly, then the wavelength is gonna be large. So I'm gonna first start out with low frequency, with large wavelength, right? And the energy is gonna be very low. So low frequency. So this is kind of like AM waves, you know? Low frequency, large wavelength, right? And low energy. Now let's go to FM waves, a little bit faster, okay? A little bit faster, more energy, you see? So now let's go over to microwaves. Let's say uh, model a microwave. It's gonna be higher uh, frequency, okay? You see, more energy. So in other words, by me creating that wave, how am I creating that wave? My hand is going up and down quicker. I'm creating a smaller wavelength, but I'm also gonna have to hold it harder because the wave carries more energy, right? So the frequency is higher, you see that? So this is kind of like a microwave. Now let's go to infrared, okay? You see, more energetic, smaller wavelength, but now I have to hold it really hard. Let's go to visible. Okay, see now it's getting harder, smaller wavelength, more energy. Ooh, now I'm getting a workout. So I'm, I'm putting in a lot of energy in order to create this light. So imagine this is like the visible light. Now I'm gonna go to ultraviolet, the dangerous waves, right? So now I'm gonna have to go even quicker. Okay, here I go. Okay, this is, all, like, this is like ultraviolet. So you can see it's really crazy, very energetic. And I'm already breathing hard, right? So now let's go to uh, the next one, X-rays. For me to sustain that is really, really hard because I'm, I'm, my hand is going up and down really quickly and I'm spending a lot of energy, right? Okay. Okay, let's produce the equivalent of a gamma ray now. Let's tighten this rod. Whew. This is a good workout. You can go to a gym and get some ropes, right? The rope uh, exercise in the gym and practice this. You get a really workout. So let's produce the gamma ray right here. 
So I'm trying to produce as many of these up and downs as possible by making the wavelength small. But in order to make, make the wavelength small, my frequency has to be really high. Here I go. Let's go gamma ray, gamma ray. Oh, very hard to sustain that, a lot of energy. The frequency is very, very high, right? So you can see here the relationship between energy, frequency, and wavelength. In order to create small wavelength, I have to uh, go up and down very fast at a high frequency, and I have to supply a lot of energy, okay? Thank you very much.